digital can sound cold. I think it's just a bit more warm to vinyl. I think it is, it's got a collectible kind of quality to it. Vinyl records have been around for more than six decades, making them the longest surviving audio format ever. Formats such as cassettes, mini discs, and now CDs have all fallen out of favour. So how has the vinyl record survived so long? We want to explore the passion people have for vinyl and find out how the stores and consumers are keeping this passion going. Um, I think vinyl's still popular mainly because of the format it is. It's, I don't think there's been a, a better format ever introduced for you know people to listen to music. And it's not just the record, I think a lot of it to do with is the actual sleeves. You know, the sleeve notes, you know, buying the sleeve. You're buying artwork as well as you're buying a piece of vinyl. Um, it's got a warm quality to it when you play it, you know, obviously. You, you don't hear, when you're playing a CD, you don't hear the same kind of thing, you know, obviously it's, it's a bit more cold. You, you look at, the, the, you know, the waves of a CD, it's a lot flatter. Yeah. You know, there's a lot more range when you're playing a piece of vinyl. You know, it's a cleaner sound at a CD, but it's not necessarily a better sound, you know, it's just... Digital can sound cold. Like, especially the high end, the high end like if you if you don't know what you're doing or you, you don't have a tune properly mastered there's going to be a big difference between you know, like an unmastered mp3 and a professionally mastered vinyl record you know that's come from a WAV uh, and it's not only that, on a, on a good sound system that's when you really start to notice you know how the sound is, is translating between that kind of cold MP3 sound and a warm acetate, for example, as you know, a warm dub plate or, or a vinyl. I'll be honest. I like to sit there and, and just look at it, look, flip through it, and and there's little bits of vinyl you don't have, you know. I mean, in this one, for example, it's a bit more, you know, you've got your inside and you've got the little bit of images you won't get on a CD. Yeah. So I think you know that's another good thing about about having it. The thing is. When you kind of press a, a vinyl record, yeah. what it is, is you're, uh, you're cutting a WAV, like uh, obviously a WAV as opposed to an MP3. Yeah. So a WAV is something like, you know, something like 2000 and whatever K, whereas an, MP, an MP3 is at 320K. So the sound difference straight away is like six times an MP3. Uh, well, my stepdad, uh, he's always had it playing in the, in the house and everything, so... It's just been around me when like growing up and that and he gave me my first final and everything so I've just in, enjoyed it from there really so it's been around me all my life. Well I started off when I was about 10, my dad used to have a record store on the market so that's what got me into it and it, you know it's predominantly vinyl, that's all he sold and cassettes in them in the 70s. That's a good question man, that's a good question. Um, I kind of can, like I remember when I first started DJing back when I was about 13 and uh, when I started, it was a youth club, so what I'd do, I'd go in and they'd have boxes of records that like, all the kids could choose from, you know, play whatever you want. And um, I kind of always religiously chose the same record, you know, because I was trying to learn to mix these certain records. And they were like early house tunes from labels like Junior and, you know, music by like house producers like Tim Deluxe and Basement Jacked Records. And uh, a, few late, a, few, a few years later on, I kind of started looking for those first records. So I guess, you know, like, I kind of, I kind of do know the first, like, five, ten records that I did start DJing with, like, yeah. Um, oh, good question. I, I don't think I, I ever actually bought one. Um, I got given a pile of records to start with, but you know, recollections of the first singles ever buying was things like um, the Police Rock Sam on Blue Vinyl, you know, when the colour vinyl things was about. I've got, I've got it there. I've got, um, I've got given the Beatles collection, uh, which is all the Beatles singles. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've lost the top off it now, but that, that's what I've kept it from there. Collectors are clearly attached to vinyl, but with digital prices falling, how have the stores that are selling them managed to survive? up my shop in 1997 so it's 16 years now well I've had to diversify I don't think I'd survive just selling vinyl and CD I sell t-shirts merchandise you know I've incorporated the old music thing into the shop rather than just you know sticking to one format in 2012 vinyl sales grew for a fifth successive year increasing by 15.3% over 2011 the independent stores sales tell a different story though 
decreasing by 9.3% over the same period. So why are the Indies not seeing the sales? Yeah, I've been collecting vinyl for 10 years next year. So I've probably got a few thousand records that I've uh, bought over the last 10 years. Uh, if I'm going to buy a record, I buy it offline. Yeah. Pretty much. What kind yeah. of websites? Um, like eBay or? No, no, no. Like Shops like Red Eye Records, Chemical Records. Um, that's about it. They're the main, main kind of two that I use, that all my friends use and stuff like that. The internet has allowed people from all over the world access to a sea of music. Cheap, easy and legal options such as Spotify and Soundcloud have gained a lot of popularity in recent years, as well as the legal options, leading to the downfall of major record stores like HMV and Virgin. So what is it that keeps the vinyl only stores afloat? Well I think our advantage is that if you're in the right place, you know, you've not got the overheads, um, a lot like the chain stores have, but they've all got high street stores, you know, where the, over, the overheads must be, you know, phenomenal. Uh, I think that's a, a lot of the reasons why H and V have gone. There, there, there's not the foot flow coming through the doors. There's not the profit margin in, in, in new stock. I mean, when CDs first hit the market, they were like fourteen pounds retail. You know, now they're, they're between three and six pound. You know, chart CDs less than a tenner. So, you know, the, their profit margin must have dropped dramatically. Um, there's a few top shops around Manchester that I tend to go to. Uh, there's one near where I live, it's called um, Clampdown Records, I go in there because obviously I like it there a bit more because he has a chat to you about what vinyl he's got in, what he thinks you'd like and you know, it's a bit like basically my favourite film is High Fidelity and that's like a vinyl kind of thing so it's kind of like his shop. It's more personal, yeah, it's, he, he will, he know, he'll know my name, you know, he'll, he'll talk to you and he'll say, you know, well last time I remember you coming in for whatever, you know, Stone Roses album, you know, maybe you should listen to a bit of whatever, whatever he's got there or, or, you know, and he will push that to you. And in a way, yeah, he's selling it to you, but in another way, you kind of respect his opinion, so you might even look at buying it. You go into any chain store and it's all, you know, there's, you don't get the customer service, you don't get the knowledge, you know, it's just staff who work there. You go into an independent, it's usually music enthusiasts who run independent record shops, so they, they seem to know what they're talking about. How much do you expect to pay for your buying really? It depends with vinyl, like in the way that you can go some places pay two pound for an old vinyl or pay you know twenty pound for a new one. Um, but for me, I don't buy CDs anymore, so I'm literally willing to pay you know a fair bit for vinyl because I enjoy it more. I think it's more of an experience, as I said before. So it's it's worth having. You mentioned that you you obviously spend your upwards of twenty pound for each vinyl. Uh, what would you spend your money on otherwise? Um, if if there wasn't vinyl. Yeah, if you couldn't, if you couldn't get vinyl. Um, to be quite honest, like I, 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 yeah, I'd still listen to the music, but there are there are three ways to listen to it, and I don't think it's as precious if you're gonna download it. So I'd probably just spend money on going watching the bands play live, because then they play it in its entirety anyway, and it's it, you get the you get a similar kind of feeling from watching a band live, the similar kind of buzz and the similar kind of aspect to it, the warmness where it's someone playing to you, um, as you do with vinyl. So that's probably what I'd do. It's physical, it's there, you know you can have it. As long as you've got something to play it on, you'll have your vinyl. So, I mean, that's what makes it more worth to me than, than having, you know, my iTunes library or whatever. So I think it is, it's more It's more poignant to have it because, I, I, I you know, I'd rather look... I, in fact, I even like looking at, you know, looking at the fact, you know, I've got this and, and I can sift through it and things like that as well. People that play vinyl are often, uh, you know, really passionate about the collection. And that's understandable because it's obvious, like, you're paying £6 for a record or you're paying £30 for one dub plate, you know, two tunes. Whereas, you know, you can get an MP3 for free. As, as soon as something's come out, you can get it within 24 hours for free and put it on CD, play it, you know. So playing vinyl, especially playing dub plates, is a big commitment collectible kind of quality to it um, I think that's why it's more niche now because obviously people go to special stores to buy vinyl you can't buy vinyl in in your well HMV's gone but obviously HMV's and and like your CD shops and things like that so you have to search it which makes it even better yeah you see that's what so that's what keeps the market going it's you know people sort of into one band they want to collect everything by them so if they sell the CD format as well as vinyl they'll probably buy both formats I think it's worth looking at the fact that if you look at what vinyl's produced now, when vinyl isn't the main um, kind of 
you know, way of listening to music is it's always been the music that's played's always been a niche. So you've got, you know, your your Led Zeppelin, your Beatles. This was never like mainstream until later on. Whereas now you've got mainstream bands don't release vinyl. It's bands you have to look for. So you look for them and then you find the vinyl. So I think you have to kind of when you when you're looking for these bands, you're collecting the vinyl because you're supporting the band. But at the end of the day, you know, it's a bit different to buying you One Direction CDs and things like that. Um, and obviously, I used to like when I was a kid looking at the pictures and everything. You know, the images are compressed. You can see here, obviously, the tiny. I mean, you've got like little windows that are tiny faces in and things like that. Whereas on a CD, it's compressed that small. You wouldn't even be able to figure out who they are. That is how it was supposed to be listened to in my eyes. You know, it wasn't supposed to be listened to compressed onto an MP3 or a CD. It was supposed to be listened to on vinyl. beneficial to the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever frisbeed a vinyl? <laughs>